the Holy Spirit in our lives. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. So I've chosen to highlight joy tonight because I think it's, it's something that we don't fully understand. And I think that it's something that we often don't experience. But yet we should if we're believers because of the reasons that we saw in tonight's passage. So I'm going to stop here and then give opportunities for comments and questions. Does anybody have anything that they'd like to share or ask or comment? You said something about complaining if we complain. Mm-hmm. What kind of complaining? Um, if we complain, then we're not allowing hardship to bring endurance in our life. Um, joy leads to praise. That's one of the distinguishing aspects of whether or not we have joy is we praise the Lord. That's why Paul says rejoice in the Lord. Well, rejoice is not simply have joy. It's like respond to God by saying something, you know, to rejoice in him. In other words, there's a verbal component. So when I complain, then I'm not, um, I'm not allowing God's Holy Spirit to fill me with joy. I'm mad at the God who's allowed this horrible thing to happen. It's making me upset. You see? So complaining goes with not acknowledging that God is in control and he's working this hard thing in my life to help me. So complaining is one of the marks of I'm not experiencing joy. Complaining about like how much work you have or you're tired, is it? Even that? You, let me ask you, do you think that you're experiencing the highest realm of joy when you're complaining? Okay, thanks. Yeah. I'm not saying that complaining isn't common. I'm not saying that, that it's not easy to do. I'm not saying that sometimes we only complain about little things because we do complain about little things. And it doesn't even seem like we're complaining. We're just, oh, I have so much work to do. You know, or it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's something like that. Well, there's a difference between an observational statement where I look at you and I say, I have a lot to do this week. That's different from... It's that it, it shows that it's we're that we're not yeah, we're yeah. not in joy. And have you ever done that? Yeah, yeah I've done that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. just just like do, do you see the difference? Two hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> two, 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 two hours ago. Actually, we complain a lot. And yeah, but I do have lots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but that's fine. You can say I have a lot of work to do. Yeah. But it's one thing to do that and then to say. <laughs> I have a lot of work to do, which we're really saying to the person, look at me, I'm so great, I'm so busy. You know, because so often when we say I have a lot of work to do, it's basically <laughs> inviting other people to worship us, to say that we're so great oh. because we have so much to do. So, the, the, um, I never saw it that way. Oh, yes, absolutely. It's our ego, you know, just waiting to be stroked. Oh, right. You know, so, it's so just they're like that to make like, people. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I have so much to do. Oh, you're so great because you do all this stuff and you get it all done. Okay, okay. I hear you. Yeah, yeah, do, I hear you, God. Okay. <laughs> do, do, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, a, yeah. a completely different way of responding is I have joy because God's given me opportunity to do the things he's called me to do. Yeah. You see the difference? Yeah. One brings attention to God and his help. The other one makes it all about you. And, oh, it's so hard, so when I do it, pat me on the back. Give me a high five, because I'm so great. And the rest of you peons couldn't do half that I did. You know? Peons. Yeah. Someone else want to comment or have a question? You're never going to come I'm back about the after this. endurance. Uh, yes. Me or the friend always asking, if I choose the wrong choice, you know, mm -hmm. and then, I mean, maybe God, I know God is controlling everything, but mm -hmm. look like we choose the wrong thing. And then we, when we choose that thing, and we are like in the hardship, like in the difficult time, is that still mean, mean that God still want to shape us in that situation? or because that, That's that, a very good question. Or because of that wrong choice, I must, okay, this is the result, okay. it must be... In the hard situation. How do you know that your choice was wrong? Is it because it brought hardship into your life? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. <laughs> that is that is wrong thinking, and that's just world fallacy. Because people think you will you just that you will be in trouble, and then finally you find one problem, one second problem. Yeah, that's the success failure view of Christianity. That's what that's what the charismatic movement is absolutely infected with. You know. Um, you chose the wrong way, and so now these bad things happen to you, or, or it's harder than it w would be before. God deals with us on the basis of faithfulness or sin. We were either faithful to God or we sinned against him. If we're faithful to God, that might bring hardship. You, you see what I'm saying? So why are you judging yourself? You're judging yourself because it didn't turn out well, and you feel bad about that, or you think it reflects badly on you, and so your ego is at stake. Or other people are judging you because they think, well, if you would have made the right decision, you would have had more money, better situation, and easier life. So your question reveals your own un unbiblical thinking and the unbiblical thinking about everybody around in your community who's judging you when, when you're experiencing those those hard things. Okay. I'm not trying to be hard on you. Yeah, no, uh, because uh, I will uh, tell uh, other uh, friends also. If, yeah, exactly. Because we will face a situation like that. Some exactly. friends say, I just don't know, have no answer. Or we, because if I'm in that situation, I will be blame myself also. <laughs> yes, exactly. And that's, that's the ego. Um, that's the ego because you're judging yourself and you're saying, I should have been smart enough to not choose that thing. Well, we're not dealing with a moral choice. We're dealing with, with some kind of other choice. It's one thing if we choose sin and then, and then experience hardship and say to ourselves, that was really stupid. I shouldn't have got, gone out and gotten drunk or whatever. And, and now I'm paying for it because I'm puking all the next day. Um, that's, that's one thing. But what you're talking about is different. Mm -hmm. What you're talking about is, is I made a choice and it seemed like the wrong choice because it, it brought so much hardship mm -hmm. in, in my life. Well, that's wrong thinking. Mm -hmm. And that's not Christian thinking. Because Christian thinking simply asks one thing. Was my choice to glorify God? If it was, it might have brought hardship into my life. Mm -hmm. you, you, are you following me? Yeah. So we have to rid ourselves of just world fallacy, that we live in a just world, where if we do right, things will go right for us. That's just world fallacy. We don't live in that kind of a world, people. And if you think that, you will be so depressed. Because then when bad things happen or hardship happens, rather than turn to the God who's in control of it all, you'll feel like he's punishing you. A lot of people doubt the love of God when their circumstances are horrible. How could God love me? And yet I can't get my locker open. That's what a teenager asks. <laughs> How could God love me? And yet I'm 40 years old and not married. That, 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 that's, what, that's what a Taiwanese woman um, that, that I know of asked, asked me that question. These are all real questions that, that people have asked me. How could God love me and allow my mother to die of cancer? when she was only 60 years old. So it's like these are questions that people actually think mm -hmm. because they misinterpret their reading of circumstances to be the place that shows them whether or not God loves me. Like um, uh, something good happened to me uh, recently and, and I said to a friend, God must love me. You know? and, and then after I texted him that, I thought, I'm such an idiot. Why did I text him that? In other words, it's something happened that was good. And so I then interpreted for my circumstances, God loved me. Well, you know what? God loves me just as much today as, as he did if that good thing wouldn't have happened in, in my life. In fact, sometimes the love of God that we experience comes to us greater in times of hardship and suffering. We can feel closer to him. Um, so... What I'm trying to do in, in this time of sharing the Bible is, is challenge everyone to think differently so that we might experience a greater spirituality, a greater peace, a greater joy, a more lasting joy. That um, Jesus says, because I go away to the Father, you'll rejoice, and no one takes away your joy. Because Christ is risen from the dead and has ascended to the Father, no one should be able to take our joy away from us. Do you have people in your life who can make you miserable? Because of what they say or what they do. Anybody in your life can, can, can make you feel. Yeah, exactly. 
um, another relative, okay? Um, and they can make you feel really bad. Well, that's not what God... The woman in the church, that's a bit me. Yeah. Because you're so picky, so nobody yeah. like you. <laughs> Not the picky. <laughs> exactly. The, the boy doesn't like you. Not about that. <laughs> exactly. So we, we have to be careful about the way that we're thinking. Joy should not and does not come from our circumstances. Happiness comes from our circumstances. Joy comes from the Lord, knowing who he is, knowing he's in control, knowing that we're, we're related to him, and knowing that even through hardship he's doing something good. That's why Joseph stands in front of his brothers after experiencing all kinds of hardship and says, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. See, that's what Christian faith is. It acknowledges the hardship. You meant it for evil. But it says, but God meant it for good. Because even in the midst of bad things that are happening, I know that God is working something good in me. Does that make sense? Yes. Not easy. But that's what the scripture teaches. Did someone have a last uh, question or comment before we, we break tonight? Has this been helpful? Yeah. Yes, it was uh, great. It's not easy. Oh, no, it's not easy. <laughs> but uh, to, or to, not, not to confront, but to tell the people who have a uh, wrong view about us. Mm -hmm. I mean, the joy is mean that you get everything, you get this and that. It's hard, you know. Especially it, with those it, it is hard. in the church. <laughs> you don't get this because you just da da da. And so maybe Take them to the scriptures. Show them the scriptures and say, this is where my joy comes from. Because they always see the system, you don't get this and that because this. So like Immature more. Christians, they're like, they're like children and toddlers who just want a toy, you know. <laughs> it's not about the relationship that they have to their parents and their father um, who loves them so much. It's about, Dad, what did you bring me? You know, what, <laughs> what, and, and we are children and toddlers want a toy from God. Mature Christians want a relationship that's yeah. growing completely different. You In see? My whole lifetime, I think I've only met four mature Christians. That's wonderful. You know four. I don't even know I've met four. Because <laughs> yeah. you can really tell that the joy is in them. Yeah. Yeah, when my brother was dying, he was... He died in front of me, and he, he, you can see, you can, you can actually see that the joy is in him through the mm -hmm. hardship. He was, there was fear, but there was mm -hmm. joy. It was cool. How he, old was he? He was 38. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, he's in heaven, so I'm very happy. But that, you can really see. Cool, right? Mm -hmm. Really cool. So, so you saw the joy of the Lord in him yeah. when he was facing death. And, and that's why I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us, that's why we, because we saw it in him, the mm -hmm. gift of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, it yeah. showed you that Christianity is real and meaningful because yeah. of somebody who was living out joy in the midst of hardship. Yeah. So here's my, my final thought as we close. When you live in the joy of the Lord, in the midst of hardship, other people will see Jesus in you. Other people will see Jesus in you. The best way that we have to lead someone to Christ is just live the Christian life. Show people what it is so that it looks appealing and it looks attractive rather than um, hit them over the head with moralism. You should do that. You should do that. You should stop doing that. You know. That's what so many people's Christianity is. You know, that's yeah, Chinese know that. Christianity. <laughs> that's Chinese Christianity, which is nothing more than moralism most of the time. You should do this or not do that. And um, Zuo is Cantonese accent. Zuo is, man. But um, my point is, is that I've been around so much Christianity that has... It's Christianity in name only because it's not anything approaching what God says that we've seen tonight.
So many people's Christianity is nothing more than idolatry. You know, it's a kid wanting a toy, seeking a God who's Santa Claus, instead of seeking a Savior who died on a cross. So may you be challenged to have joy in your hardship. Let's pray.